But Congresswoman, you had your reservations about this deal. You voted yes. Tell me how you got there. Yeah, I'll tell you how I got there. Uh, it really crystallized for me on the floor when we were doing the procedural vote to bring the bill to the floor and the Republicans didn't even have the votes to have the rule suspension to bring the bill to the floor. And it was clear that in order for us to get this over the finish line, we as Democrats were going to have to do the work of bringing it over the finish line. And looking at the numbers, 250,000 Vermonters would have been directly impacted by a default. It would impact their benefits through Social Security and their veterans' benefits. And that's that's a, just too high a price to pay. So as I was telling Vermonters as I came home, uh, the bill, some parts of it were distasteful to me, but the, the alternative was catastrophic. And so it was pretty clear to me that we needed to govern. You have said that this whole situation with the debt fight, it makes it clear that the debt ceiling should be ab abolished. Tell me what that would look like and what it would take to get there. So I know that there is a, a bill already circulating for us to sign on to, to to just do away with the debt ceiling. We are one of only two nations uh, in the world, Western nations, that have a debt ceiling. And it is um, an obstacle that prevents us from having real substantive conversations about how we want to spend money within the budget. So when you look at what happened in this fight, right? We had uh, an extremist element of the Republican conference essentially holding us hostage, and they had their list of demands. And what was the compromise that was arrived at with the president, his negotiators, and um, McCarthy was not just about the debt ceiling or reducing the debt. There were parts of the budget that got included in that. That is not the way we want to do our work. We have to go through committee process in the light of day and making sure that we're making decisions that are in the best interest of the American people. It is not good for any uh, state or um, you know constituents to see a small group of people negotiating behind closed doors. It should be happening within the uh, Agricultural Committee for the Farm Bill and in the Appropriations Committee. And so I applaud the the president, I think he came out on top. I think he saved us from a lot of horrible cuts that were on the punch list, but we don't want to go through this again. So I think having a, a bill that says we abolish the debt ceiling and we, we pay our bills, that's what the Constitution says. We have to pay our bills. Well, to that point, I mean, it was an asymmetric fight. At the same time, there was a lot of talk in the run-up to this about this being a task for Hakeem Jeffries, this being a task for Kevin McCarthy. Does this give you any sense? Sense, that there is the possibility of compromise on other legislation moving forward in this Congress? S surprisingly, it does, because the, the extremist members of the conference lost. They did not get what they wanted. They literally wanted to crash the economy. I feel that most sincerely. So many of them voted to default. And it is clear to me that the power that they thought they had, they don't have. And so is it still going to be a very uh, tough road ahead to find compromise and to come together across party lines to get work done? Yes, it's going to continue to be hard because you've still got people like uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Bober and other extremists who aren't interested in governing. But we saw in the compromise that McCarthy made that at least he on some level understands the stakes that default was not um, possible for us, not just for our economy, but for the global economy. So I actually feel surprisingly a little bit hopeful coming will, out of this. I will take that optimism where I can get it. Congressman Becca Belint, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us.